Hello and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking a look at how you can conduct an event study using starter. More specifically, we're going to be using the eStudy command and this one will help us to calculate the cumulative average abnormal returns, which has been requested by a lot of people. So here, here goes. Now, first of all, I've settled everything in my do file here. And if you don't know how to use do files, we all obviously got a video for that. So go check that one out. But let's first take a look at the data we're going to be using for today. This data underscore eStudy is given by the authors of the eStudy command. And I'll make sure to include a link in the description below where you can, of course, go and download the data. So let's go and take a look what they have for us. We obviously have a date variable because we need, well, the ability to specify what date the given event or events happen on. We have different components here to be able to conduct a CAVM or a Farmer French free factor model and a number of stocks here. And I'm just going to assume that they're stock returns, but make sure that your input is adjusted accordingly. That should be all that we have in this data set here. So that's what we're dealing with today. So let's go and take a look at how the eStudy command actually works like. Okay, so first of all, just like any other command, we start with the name of the command. But maybe a good idea would be to install it first because this is not a standard command in Stata. So ssc install followed by eStudy should be able to install the command for you. Let's run it here. On my computer, of course, obviously it's been installed already, so I can just comment this out. We don't need it, but just to make sure you have it already. Like any other command, we put in the command name first. And the first input we need here is for, well, what stocks are we gonna calculate this for? So remembering a bit what we have in our data set, we had, for instance, IBM. So let's try that one. We had Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, spelling is a thing indeed. And we have BOA and Ford, and do we also want Boeing in there? Now we have a nice number of stocks here. And here is where we're gonna start with all the options. So we're gonna be showing a lot of different ones and take it step by step. So let's just say basic model. Start with that first. The first option you always must specify is of course, well, what date does this happen on? And this happens with uh, the command here or the option event date. However, you first obviously have to specify what is your date variable. And that is the option date var. You put in here, what is the date? That's the name of our date variable. So this will specify what variable in our data set controls for what the date is. Next thing you have to specify the event date. And that's of course a, a very important when you're conducting an event study. And I'm gonna put it in a specific format, which explanation will follow. But here we're looking at the 12th of December in 2016. And then you may wonder, why is this the format? Well, that is specified here, A, by the event date given, and B, you of course can just use the next option here called date format to specify what is the current format, which is month, day, and year. So this already sets what's the date our event happens on. And of course you can always change that yourself and you can always go and play around with dates a little bit to get a better feel for it. Now, this is obviously not all. And the first basic model here, we are just gonna be using a one factor model or just a cap M. So in this particular list, you have to just specify MODT as the mod here in this case. And we're gonna use a single index model. What the options are, go take a look at the help file. It's very nice. And there you can learn about the different models. I'm gonna take you through a few of them, of course, but there's of course always more to discover in the help file. Next off, we have to specify the index list option. So index list here, why is that? This is specified what model we're gonna be running. I'm just gonna write MKT to specify a cab M at first. Now we have to specify what diagnostics test is being run. So diag GN. And there's a number of different tests here to check whether your cars, boom, boom, indeed, are significant. Here, we're just gonna base it on the normal distribution, which has option norm. And then the final thing we have to specify now is the window. And we have a lower bound and an upper bound. And the way it works in this program is you specify the first lower bound as LB1. So let's say we wanna have it from three days prior, and then the upper bound one up until, well, day zero which is the day of the event. Finally, I like the option of four decimals just to make sure that our output is specified with four decimals. Now we pray that it works, of course. Now you see here, it calculates actually very nicely for each of the securities, so each of the stocks in our portfolio, 
and for the entire portfolio, and they've done it very fast and also produces the according p-values. That's very nice, right? Of course, there's a lot more this model can do. So the first thing, let's try and extend this model to say a pharma French three-factor model using the same securities. So I'm just gonna copy the thing down, but there's a few things we have to change. First, it's not a single index model anymore. This is now a multiple uh, factor model. So MFM it's called. Just go and check the help file if you need to know what it's called. Here we have to add more to the index list, so SMB and HML. And now we have a Pharma French free factor model. Let's hope it works, run it again and see what we get. Of course, it's hard to see in the output, but trust me when I say now we run the underlying model being a Pharma French free factor model to predict our stock returns. That's not all, we got even more for you. So now we can of course try and set multiple bounds. Set multiple bounds. I'm gonna copy the same down, so we're gonna be doing with the Pharma French free factor model. And you see here it's called LB1 and UB1. You may guess it already, we can just use LB2, UB2 and so forth. So let's try LB2, or sorry, my end. let's do the LB2 put in a new lower bound and which one should we try out this time here let's try from zero up until upper bound two which could be just three so now we have two different bounds one from minus three to zero and another one from zero to three and let's just to try a lot more let's try lower bound three you hopefully see the pattern here right which goes from minus three upper bound three up until plus three now I've just specified three different ones. And what makes it really nice for this command here, as you can see, it just plucks it in right in a new column next to the previous one. So it's very easy to compare all these windows. Let's see if there's more things we can do. We can of course also try and do it for different portfolios at the same time even. So multiple variables, let's call it that. Or also call it portfolios, your choice. Let's put it down here. And what are we gonna do? The only thing we actually have to do in this case here, well, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, is that after Boeing here, we put a parentheses, and in here we write the second variable list. And let's see, what do we have in here? We have a lot of tech stocks, for instance. So let's try it with Apple, Netflix, Google, Facebook should also be there if I'm not mistaken, and let's just try and stick it with that and see if this actually works out, right? So let's try it out. This should hopefully do the same thing, but for two lists of stocks. It indeed does so, and you can see it looks very much like before, but of course we've got a different panel below with the new set here. Now this is looking very good, but there's one thing you may wonder. This red text that pops up every single time. So let's finally here figure out how we can actually change this. It has a default for the upper bound of the estimation we know to be set to, well, 30 days, or depending on whether you have daily, monthly, or what data, but here in this case, daily data, I assume. And of course, we can also change this away from the default. So let's try that as a final thing. Set new estimation upper bound. We copy the command down again, because, well, that is the easiest to do, of course. And what are we gonna do? We just need one extra sub option here. If you don't know the sub options, always just go and check out the help file. It's very nice and they actually wrote it rather complete. So it's called ESWUB. And then we put in here minus 20, for instance, just set the new bound at 20. You can of course always adjust this the way you want. And let's try this one out one more time. And you see now the nice red text is gone. And well, before we finish this video, there's a few notes I would like you to, uh, to consider here. Please go and check out what different kinds of uh, estimation technique is there. So here we based everything on the normal distribution, but there's a lot more to do. And also go simply and just try out the different options there. You can do a lot of nice things here, and this makes it for a very easy way to conduct your event study and calculate these commutative, average, abnormal returns. Well, that was everything I had for you in this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's Classroom. Bye-bye.